Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is Dr. Shagadu Chatterjee from VG Somayati Kharagpur who is taking this course and uh, we are in week 8 and session 3, uh, video lecture number 3 also and we will be discussing uh, in this case market basket analysis. So, in the earlier videos of this week, we have discussed about RFM analysis that is one part of retail analytics which is mainly used in retail but also used in other context. Uh, on the other hand, market basket analysis is something that is used only in retail. So, majorly used in uh, e-commerce, but also uh, used in uh, brick and mortar retail stores. So, uh, this is also generated, this particular data, the data used in this particular analysis is also generated from the scanner data. What is scanner data? Uh, the data that is generated when you scan some item in the billing counter that is something called scanner data. So, uh, we go with a basket, when the basket has multiple products and people actually the people in the um, counter scans the uh, products that are there in our basket and that particular information along with your customer ID, probably the loyalty card number, etcetera, the uh, date, time, etcetera, the person's name who is there in the counter, etcetera gets stored in the ERP. When we actually analyze that data after collecting it from ERP and to find out that what kind of products goes together well and what kind of uh, offers I can make, what kind of product bundles I can make, these are something which we can find out from market basket analysis. So, the first question is what is a basket data? A very common type of data is basket data which is often also called transaction data. So, the data that is uh, the, uh, that is coming from a transaction is called transaction data. Uh, in the next slide, we will show uh, how the transaction database looks like, but each record, each particular uh, row uh, represents transactions between usually a customer and a shop. So, each record in a supermarket transaction database for example, corresponds to a basket specific item. So, it is a particular basket's item, what are the products that you have bought in one particular visit in a retail store is something that we find out in a transaction data. Now, often times e-commerce purchase, see the problem why do you buy lots of products together? Because I cannot go to a retail store multiple times, there is a, if it is a brick and mortar retail store then there is a cost in terms of going to that particular store. So, if I go multiple times, I will incur that cost multiple times. For Kirana stores, small mom and pop stores that is there uh, close by to your home, you generally go multiple times and you probably visit uh, multiple times uh, in a week and, and probably buy at max 2 items, 3 items, 4 items at a time, probably sometimes less than that. But in a, in, a, in a bigger retail store where which is a little bit away from your home, it is a supermarket or it is a, uh, a hypermarket kind of store, there the uh, cost of travel from your home to that place is high and that is why you plan for that purchase visit and when you plan for this purchase visit, you actually note it down what are the different kind of products that you are going to purchase in that purchase visit. And then you go there, sometimes you purchase those items which are there in the list, sometimes you do not purchase and purchase something else which are not there in the list, you, which you purchase based on the impulse buying or based on then and there purchase decision, moment of truth based purchase decision making, you buy those products. Now, market basket create, becomes a basket only when you purchase multiple products and it is more prominent for supermarkets, less prominent for Kirana stores or mom and pop stores. On the other hand, in the case of e-commerce, at one point of time, if you remember, we used to purchase, so there was a delivery fee and that is why, because there was a delivery fee for each item, uh, sorry, for each uh, uh, purchase transaction, that is why what we used to do is that we used to buy lots of products together in a basket. Similar things we still do in let us say e-commerce firms which are food based e-commerce firm. For example, let us say Zomato or Swiggy, when you order food for each visit you have to pay, each transaction you have to pay 15 rupees, 20 rupees as delivery charges. So, that is why you tend to buy lots of 
products, food products from one restaurant because if you buy it from different restaurant and different transaction happens, then different delivery charges will be there. So, that is why for this kind of context, you will have see the basket kind of a data where multiple products are there in one transaction. But let us say for Amazon, if you have taken the prime subscription of Amazon or let us say some other subscription for Flipkart or for various e-commerce firms where the delivery charges are minimal, in those kind of situations people actually buy one item, two item or often they buy one item at a go. So, there the basket is not created. So, if the basket is not created, then there is another way you have to deal with the um, recommendations or the market baskets. You cannot get a basket there because people do not buy multiple items in one transaction. You buy one book separately because the purchases are very, very not very uh, planned. Sometimes it is very impulse or then and there you purchase, you, you decide that okay, I will purchase this and you purchase. So, often times the, the, the level of mo, uh, motivation, level of engagement that you can see in a brick and mortar retail store is not so much visible in an e-commerce firm. And if that is the case, then this market basket analysis might not work in that way. So, this is something uh, that was there uh, in the initial days e-commerce firm used to, uh, used to follow market basket analysis quite a bit. But slowly it is going down, but still it is an important topic and that is why we will discuss. So, what is basket data? A very common type of data which has transaction data basically and this is how it looks like. So, let us say each row here is a transaction ID, each row and what are the columns? The first column is the transaction ID basically and the second column is apple, beer, cheese, dates, eggs, fish glue, honey, ice cream. So, certain food items that are kept here and blank means that, that in that particular thing that is not been purchased and one means it has been purchased. So, now if I see the first row that means the first row is uh, ID number 1 where apple was bought, beer was bought, dates were bought, glue, were bo glue was bought and honey was bought. So, these are the 5 items that was bought, the other items has not been bought. In the second case, cheese, dates and eggs have been bought. In the third case, beer and cheese has been bought. Now, just imagine the situation that you have multiple products, thousands of products in an e-commerce firm or in a brick and mortar store and you have millions of customers. Now, if you create this kind of a matrix for those kind of every transaction then this data is a huge data. So, ideally it is very difficult to do this analysis uh, for the whole data set at a go. So, what we do is we generally club it up. For example, we do it for only uh, dairy, dairy products, or only food products or only apparel products and then also uh, transactions which happened in this month only because sometimes month by versus month the transaction pattern can change depending on what offers are going on depending on what um, the what kind of uh, atmosphere, uh, what kind of uh, season it is, various other things might impact. So, that is why we reduce the number of transaction based on segmenting by uh, week or month and etcetera and then we reduce the number of products also, the number of columns in that way by reducing the number of categories. So, this is something that we do. Now, if we go ahead what is market, market basket analysis? Any analysis that is done with this market basket data is called market basket analysis as simple as that. Now, if I want to uh, think about it in a, a little bit detailed way, it is the input is the list of purchases by purchasers and we do not have names here. So, we do not identify which customer it is, we just have the customer transaction ID that is all and identify purchase pattern. So, this the job of this market basket analysis is to identify mark purchasing pattern. What items tends to be purchased? So, these are the certain questions that we try to answer. What items tend to be purchased together? So, for example, steak and potatoes or beers and pretzels or in our case alcohol and, and, and uh, snacks items which will have with alcohol or it is a bread and butter. These guys are bought together always. When you buy bread, you jam or butter something you buy. 
So, these which items tend to be purchased together, sometimes these are obvious, some of the things are not so obvious. So, the finding out that not so obvious things is the job of market basket analysis. What items are purchased sequentially? For example, let us say if you buy uh, a house, then you will buy a furniture obviously, there is a sequence. If you buy a car, you will later buy tires or buy probably uh, petrol or buy, buy lubricants. So, these are some of for example, or, or let us say if you buy a computer, later you will probably buy the spare parts or accessories or, or internet connections. So, these are all Wi-Fi routers, these are all basically sequential purchase. So, sometimes we try to see that whether the same data set we ca I can make based on whether some things has been bought and something has been bought within that week or within that month, we generally club them in a one transaction ID. What items tend to be purchased by season that is also something which can be answered by market basket analysis. So, in majorly we will focus on the first question. So, what is the, we categorize customer purchase behavior by doing this and then identify actionable information. So, that is something which is very informed, important that you have to identify actionable information, some information based on which you can do something, we can work on it. So, we create purchase profiles that is an actionable information. If I know that this is one purchase profile that is another purchase profile segmenting the is rather than segmenting the customers, we are segmenting the transactions that can be done and we can find out the profitability of each purchase, purchase profile. If I can break it in segments of transactions, which segment is more profitable, I can try find that out and we can use for marketing this information how in layout or catalog. So, it is a classic example I, I, I told in my in one of my retail marketing class to my students that have you, have you ever checked that uh, why does people put the uh, the product uh, which are used for cleaning uh, utensils, let us say Vim bar or some gels and etcetera. So, the gels are Vim bar and etcetera which is cake based uh, products, cake based uh, the dishwashing products are not kept just beside crockery items, high end crockery items. Beside high end crockery items, you put gel based thing and then the cake based thing you put it in, 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 in the place of our soaps and etcetera or let us say for the detergents and etcetera are kept. So, ideally this is a market basket analysis result that you have uh, analyzed that people who used to buy crockery which is high end, they also buy something in a sequence, they buy something which they feel that is good for their hand, good for the product that the crockery that they have bought and etcetera. So, they buy a high end, more pricey, more quality uh, giving uh, or more value giving uh, product which is let us say the gel version of dishwashing products. Now, on the other hand those who do not buy crockery, who buy normal let us say utensils which is uh, uh, metallic utensils they might want to, uh, they might be okay with buying a Vim bar kind of product as well. So, that is how you position the product because you know that these two guys combine with each other, these guys two guys might go with each other. So, the layout or catalog of your, it can be a brick and mortar store, it can be a uh, e-commerce e store also. So, e-commerce e store it is very common that if you see in Amazon, you are seeing one particular product and they are in the bottom it has a bundle is given that whoever purchased this also have purchased that and these two products together is 100 rupees off something like that. So, at the bottom you come to know all of these things details are given. So, that is also an example of layout or catalog building. Select products for promotion, which products will be used for promotion that can come up from market basket analysis. As I just told product placement, space allocation, these things can also come out as a result of market basket analysis. So, Steve Smith, president of SNLs in US has told that market basket benefits are selection of promotions, merchandising strategy, sensitive to price like ketonic entrance, pizzas, pies, oriental entries and orange juice, these are also important. Then uncover customer spending patterns, this also can be done 
and joint promotional opportunities by combining them, bundling them, etc., can be done using this analysis technique. While it is used, it is used in retail outlets mainly as I told, it is also used in telecommunications, it is also used in banks, uh, it is also used in TV bundles. Have you seen that? Okay, uh, the there is a bundle that has been created by Tata Sky for sports lovers or for regional pr product lovers or Hindi movie lovers or English movie lovers. So, they create different kind of uh, product bundles and different pricing for them. That is also one example of market basket analysis. You can find out that whoever watches this also watches that and that is why and they have chosen this kind of channels together when they have created their own combination. So, that is why I, have, I am also offering this kind of a combination in banks, in insurance, in medical this can be used. So, chain store edge uh, executive in 1995 uh, uh, it has been used and then customer shop on personal needs not on product grouping. So, this is also there is an important factor uh, in initially we associate products by category and then what percentage of each category was in each market basket that is something that we analyze, but that we have to keep in mind that customers shop based on their personal needs not on product groupings. So, let us say these are my 5 customer or 6 customers data, these are the basically transaction data not customer data and these are the products that has been bought together. Now, if I put it in this way, see that every time beer has been bought out of them there are beer and pot chips combination is 2 out of this 6 one beer and pot chi potato chips happening together there were 2 such cases. Uh, beer and milk happening together there were one such cases, soda and milk happening together there were two such cases and so on. And most common product is milk, see milk and milk happening together is 4 means most common product is milk. So, you just see that beer and potato chips is making sense, but milk and soda happening together probably there is no underlying meaning, why milk and soda will come together I do not know. So, that is something that you have to think about that why milk and soda is coming together. So, probably a noise. So, sometimes you have to identify the noises as well. What are the profiles that you get? Some of the very classic profiles are beauty conscious, health conscious, sport conscious, sub consciousness, unconsciousness also or or probably probably less aware or less carefree kind of like the smoker casual drinker can be. Then new family, illness over the counter means uh, like, like when you buy a paracetamol or when you buy a uh, some, some metrozeal or flagyl kind of products which is used for your uh, stomach upset and etcetera that is illness over the counter products people buy like uh, anything. So, let us say you are going for a travel, you want to uh, buy this over the counter products, stock it so that during the travel if you face something. So, these kinds of products comes with together like some digestive items, some, some product which is related to pain, some product which is related to basic first stage uh, 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 your uh, fever, all of these products can come together. Then home handyman products or sentimental products, there can be certain purchase profiles which is focused on kids or pets, uh, gardening, certain hobbies, automotive is also a hobby. TV or studio enthusiast also an hobby, then seasonal or traditional kind of products, homemakers there are lots of purchase profiles I will not read them up, there are lots of purchase profiles that can be created and this is something that regularly custom, uh, the marketing managers do to find out the purchasing profiles. For example, in a beauty conscious purchasing profile what are the products that can come together, one example can be you can see that cotton ball, hair dye. Uh, cologne and nail polish, these are some of the products which can come very easily together in a beauty conscious fun. So, now you have to design that out of this purchase profile, if I can find out from market basket lots of purchase profile, which one will I push and which way will I not push. So, ideally I will push that one which will give me better profit. For example, kids fashion is a high margin uh, purchase profile 15.24 dollar is something that I make a profit from each transaction. So, I will push there, but let us say smoker the purchase profile is 2.88 dollar I will not push there, 
student or home office, they are highly price sensitive. They take lot of time before purchasing anything. So, I will not push them. So, we generally actually create a from upper, upper purchase profile to lower purchase profile. We sort them up based on the profitability of that purchase profile, the average margin or average profit that I generate from each purchase profile and based on that we push some some people which we push do not push some other profile. So, that is something that is also an application of market basket analysis. Now, if other things that then affinity positioning like coffee and coffee makers is close proximity to it can be put or cross selling can be done. So, if you are uh, buying cold medicine I can also ask you to buy okay, digestive medicine or orange juice or something like that. So, if you Monday night football kiosks on Monday PM that can also be shown. So, this kind of things can be done cross selling can also be done. Now, I have talked about lots of good things about market basket analysis, <laughs> but every good thing will have a bad thing as well. There are some cons as well. What are the limitations of market basket analysis? So, some of the limitations of market basket analysis can be handled by predictive analytics, recommendation engine and etcetera, but still it is very easy that is why it is more used. It is more fast and easy than recommendation engine. So, it takes over 18 months to implement that is one of the major. So, you have to create lots of data. If you have, have lots of data from the past, no problem, but you have to have the data. And market basket analysis only identifies hypothesis which need to be tested. For example, the one that I have just shown that soda and milk coming together, it is a hypothesis that they this is a noise or let us say beer and pretzels come together, beer and potato chips come together. It is a hypothesis that they should come together. You have to test that using various predictive analytics technique to further implement, but this hypothesis generation is also important. Measurement of impact needed that is also something is a limitation. You do not know uh, how to measure them. Difficult to identify the product groupings and complexity grows exponentially as the data goes up because it is again you have to deal with the whole matrix. If you have to deal with the whole matrix, if the cost column numbers goes up, if the row numbers goes up, you are in a dilemma. You are increasing the complexity exponentially there and that is where the problem is. And the benefits is simple computation can be uh, undirected that means, do not have to have a hypothesis before analysis. You can create hypothesis after the analysis and different data forms can be analyzed. Now, let us come to the numbers. Our example transaction database has 20 records of supermarket transactions from a supermarket that only sells 9 things. One month in a large supermarket with 5 stores spread over a reasonably sized city might easily yield a database of 20 million baskets, each containing a set of products from a pool of around 1000. So, to understand what is the, what that means, that means that I am doing a small problem, real life problems are not like that. So, we used to uh, see a picture in Facebook and other social media websites that the data analysis that we show in the classroom are basically a puppy and the data analysis that you actually do in the corporate are basically dinosaurs or are very big monsters and that is true actually. So, the, the one that I will show you in the class because I have limitation of time and etcetera that will be 20 records and 9 products, but in real life situation you will have 20 million records and 1000 products and that will probably have to break your uh, head on that. So, that is okay. that is a part of the story. So, how to discover the rules? I told till now I have spent a lot of time to say that there will be association rules, two products can, should come together. So, how to create? A rule, a common and useful application of data mining, it is a rule is something like this. This is how the rule will sound like. If a basket contains apple and cheese, then it also contains beer. So, the condition of the rule is the if part, we call it the confidence. Confidence is when how when the if part is true or how often is then be true. So, given that if is true, how often the then is true. So, probability of the then part given that the if part, this is confidence, this is the same as accuracy. On the other hand, another nomenclature is coverage or support, that means 
how much of the database contains the if part that means how what is the probability of the if part. So, in this particular rule that has been written here probability of the apples and cheese probability and ap apple and cheese occurring together is coverage of support. Given that that occurs what is the probability that uh, beer will occur is called confidence. For example, what is the confidence and coverage of if a basket contains beer and cheese then it also contains honey. So, 2 by 20 records contain both beer and cheese in that data set that I shown. So, so coverage is 10 percent and only out of these two only one contains honey. So, that is why confidence is 50 percent. So, this is the data set you can check it up. Interesting and useful rules are what? You have to focus on statistically anything that is interesting is something that happens significantly more than you would expect by chance. So, if a rule says that by chance if, if there was no rule it happens x amount of time. If there is a rule if there is a condition in which this particular thing suits up then it is interesting. For example, let us say in general nobody purchases uh, let us say beer in India. Let us just assume that in a particular place nobody purchases beer. But when it rains, lots of beer purchase happens. So, that that given that rain is happening, beer purchase goes up, that rule is interesting if only that that is more than what is expected commonly. So, basic statistical analysis of basket data may show that 10 percent of baskets contain bread and 4 percent of baskets contain washing powder. That is, if you choose a basket randomly, if you just close a basket, the probability of having bread is 0.1 and probability of washing powder is 0 0.04, very low. That means, you might have bread more commonly than washing powder. Now, what is the probability of the basket containing both bread and washing powder? Ideally, that should be further lower 0 0.1 into 0 0.04 if they are independent to each other. So, 0 0.004. Now, what is we would expect 0.4 percentage of baskets to contain both bread and washing powder in, in case of independence. Now, interesting means surprising. Now, by chance if it is not the case, we therefore, have a prior expectation that just 4 in 1000 baskets should contain both bread and washing powder makes sense, because washing powder is 4 percent, bread is 10 percent both occurring together if they have no relationship with each other is 4 percent into 10 percent comes at 40 by 10,000 that means 4 in 1000. Now, if we investigate and discover that 20 in 1000 baskets are actually having bread and washing powder together then that is a surprise element. It tells us something is going on in consumers mind that bread and washing powder are connected in some way. So, that is a hypothesis that we have to build. There may be ways to exploit this discovery, put the powder and bread at opposite ends of the supermarket. That means, what you if around let us say 2 percent people, if they, they, they are, there is a combination that whoever buys this also might buy also that. If you put them in two opposite corners in a supermarket, then you are making the person walk down the aisles of the supermarket and while he, he will travel more within the supermarket, the more he travels the more he buys. So, that kind of strategy people take to, to make sure that the revenue goes up. So, finding surprising rules, suppose we ask what is the most surprising rule in the database. So, that would be presumably a rule whose accuracy is more different from his expected accuracy than any others, but it also has to be have a suitable level of coverage. So, first of all accuracy is important to be surprising, but coverage is also important or else it may be just a statistical bleep and not unexplainable. So, looking only at rules of the form if basket contains x and y it also contains z, our realistic numbers tells us that there may be around 500 million distinct possible rules if there are 2 million transactions, 20 million transactions of 1000 products, then around 500 million rules is ob obvious. It can happen that many rules. For each of these, we need to work out its accuracy and coverage. 
and by trawling through the database of around as I told 20 million basket records. So, that is a huge operation to create all the, the, the uh, coverage and, and the coverage and support for each of them and confidence for each of them. So, we need more efficient ways to find such tools. We cannot do it for all these combinations. So, what do we do? We use a a priori algorithm. What is a priori algorithm? There is nothing very special or clever about a priori, but it is simple, fast and very good at finding interesting rules on a specific kind in baskets or other transaction data using operations that are efficient in standard database system. So, it is used a lot in R&D departments of retailers in industry, but note that we will now talk about item sets instead of rules. I am not talking about rules, I am talking about a combination of items and also the coverage of a rule is same as the support of that item set. So, a coverage means how many times the if part happens, it is also similar to the support of the item set. So, let us see, do not get confused, let us see what is the algorithm. So, actually we will deal with this algorithm part in the next video. Let us take a break on this particular thing. So, all I discussed till now is what is the usage of, uh, of uh, market basket analysis, what is the basic algorithm and now we will use a data mining technique to make it easier, more doable. Let us discuss about that algorithm in the next video. Thank you very much for being with me. I will come back in the next video.